Hello and full person, this is Anton, and today we're going to discuss a couple of new studies that essentially focus on a somewhat intriguing phenomenon involving black holes basically residing inside stars. A phenomenon that was originally proposed back in the 70s, but a phenomenon that has been described a little bit differently in these new studies, specifically focusing on mysterious primordial black holes, or black holes that might have existed since the beginning of the universe. And so let's talk a little bit more about this, discuss how likely these are to exist, and also how we could maybe find them. But actually let's start with the image right here. This is an image of a concept from 1974, a so-called Thorn Zirko object. A hypothetical star that was proposed by the iconic Kip Thorne and Anna Zitko back in 1977. And it's essentially an object that very likely started as a giant star that somehow accidentally swallowed either a neutron star or maybe even a black hole that eventually merges with its core, basically creating a kind of a new star. A star with the core of a neutron star or a black hole that suddenly becomes super energized and starts emitting a lot of new light especially very powerful light, such as X-rays, while also doing a lot of other stuff, such as pulsate, and produce very powerful stellar winds. And though we've discovered several candidates potentially being these stars, nothing concrete has been confirmed yet. These are still very hypothetical. But this idea of having a black hole inside a star is obviously possible, especially if the black hole is not particularly big. And specifically, what if this black hole is microscopic? Theoretically, there's a suggestion for the existence of primordial black holes formed in the beginning of the universe from all of the energy collapsing into much smaller black holes, possibly even the mass of a typical asteroid, that some researchers believe could be all over the place. As a matter of fact, they could even explain the existence of dark matter. And a few years back, one of the researchers even proposed that one of them could be inside the solar system and possibly explain the effects we observe from the mysterious Planet Nine. So maybe the planet 9 is not a planet, but actually a primordial black hole. Which is naturally why we can't seem to find it. And so the potential existence of these black holes has always been kind of exciting. Especially since they would be extremely small, very difficult to detect, and could definitely explain so many mysteries in the entire universe. The biggest one being dark matter. Just by sheer numbers, all of them could be definitely responsible for the effects of dark matter. And intriguingly, if their mass is only a mass of a typical planet or even smaller, a typical asteroid, they would actually be extremely small in size, possibly as small as a typical atom. Which basically means that they can kind of go through matter without much interference and only absorb a little bit of mass as they pass through things in the process of releasing some energy. And so one of these recent studies kind of focused on the idea of maybe stars absorbing these types of black holes inside of them and then trying to see what kind of effects they would produce. Although since black holes do come in different masses, here they only focused on smaller primordial black holes, not the ones with the mass of a typical star or even more massive, which would normally destroy everything almost right away and also very likely cause a relatively massive explosion. But how big and how small would these actually be? Let's say there's one with the mass of the asteroid Bennu, the one NASA visited not so long ago. Here the mass is 78 billion kilograms. And so by looking up Schwarzschild radius calculator, such as the one right here from Wolfram Alpha, we can essentially calculate its approximate size. It's right here. Now in terms of the actual size, that's basically 1 million times smaller than the atom of hydrogen. Yet based on modern theories, we know such objects could exist. And detecting them would be practically impossible. They can even possibly go through matter without pretty much interacting with anything and only sometimes absorb more mass. But the more massive they get, the larger they get, and the more interaction they end up producing. And so if some of these more massive black holes somehow end up in a molecular cloud where new stars form, some of them might even end up inside some kind of a dense cloud and even potentially get absorbed by one of the stars. In other words, there's actually a possibility that if these black holes are real, quite a few stars out there could have accidentally absorbed some of these microscopic black holes, which could still be inside of them even today. But because they're so small, they would be basically unnoticeable at first, and actually possibly for a very, very long time, maybe even billions of years. Yet as they grow in size and as they become bigger and bigger, they acquire more effects inside the star while slowly feeding on the star itself from deep within. 
So basically, they slowly start absorbing some atoms here and there, growing larger and larger in the process. And eventually, this may reflect on the star itself. These stars no longer become normal. As the black hole consumes more and more mass, especially feeding on the hydrogen, which usually supports the nuclear fusion inside the star, it potentially affects how the star looks on the outside. But more importantly, the black hole might also start forming an accretion disk that starts growing larger and larger and creates additional effects. And though all of this starts really slow, it potentially accelerates and even maybe reaches exponential speeds, with a black hole of a certain mass possibly destroying the star faster and faster. Now, it's not entirely clear what might happen to these stars at the end, and whether all of this stuff will actually fall into the black hole, or maybe even cause the star to explode, because it's no longer able to support itself, which actually might lead to an implosion first. But just like with the thorn Zitko stars, this object could exist for millions and millions of years, possibly even longer. And they will definitely produce certain types of emissions and certain signatures. But more importantly, at some point, they will destroy the stars, basically resulting in a kind of a cosmic cannibalism. And the researchers behind recent studies realized that if these black holes do exist, and if a lot of stars end up being affected by them, they might have the most effect on much older stars that are probably a little bit less massive than the sun, 80% or less. So basically a typical red dwarf. In this case, resulting in their complete destruction. Or at least statistically, it seems to happen a lot more likely for much smaller stars than larger stars. And if this assumption is correct, it also means one thing. By looking at certain galaxies, we might actually be able to find a kind of a deficit of smaller stars. Now, in a typical galaxy like the Milky Way, the vast majority of the stars, like 90% or so, are these smaller stars, red dwarfs. But in our galaxy, there's also quite a lot of star formation. However, if we look at ancient galaxies, and especially maybe the ones that stop star formation, or even the ones that mostly contain old stars, such as, for example, ultra-faint dwarf galaxies, which usually also have a very small number of stars that are usually very easy to identify, in those galaxies, if we do find a deficit of smaller stars, with most stars appearing larger than the Sun, that would actually be an intriguing sign. It would imply a lot of these stars basically got infected by these black holes and possibly got destroyed, turning into black holes themselves. While also explaining how certain galaxies, like the one that was recently discovered around the Milky Way, seem to possess almost no stars and a huge mass, a lot of dark matter or something inside. In those cases, maybe those are actually all of these galaxies where stars got destroyed by black holes. And so this would be particularly visible in galaxies with a higher content of dark matter. But at the moment, this is still hypothetical and has not really been investigated physically. It's still just a theory. If correct, though, it means that in certain galaxies, especially the ones with even more density and higher number of stars per volume, we would actually expect even more of this ratio and thus more primordial black holes. Something that can be visible to a lot of different telescopes. But in order to confirm this, New observations have to be conducted on these ultra-faint galaxies, focusing on the number of stars and their overall age and size. This has not been done yet. And so if we do discover mostly older, bigger stars compared to smaller stars, this would be very difficult to explain in any other way. And it would also suggest that black holes in this case represent a type of an object known as macho, massive compact halo object, a perfect dark matter candidate almost undetectable, almost not interacting with anything, but having a lot of gravitational effects, and also explainable through natural formation in early universe. Intriguingly, not so long ago, even the LIGO detections suggested that maybe primordial black holes do exist. There was a detection recently that we've discussed in the video in the description that is difficult to explain without the formation through primordial means. It was not a very small one, it was not an asteroid mass black hole, it was actually massive, but with a mass that's impossible to explain unless it was produced in unusual means, for example, in the early universe. Likewise, in 2021, one of the collaborations using pulsar detections uncovered unusual gravitational waves that could also be only produced, maybe, by primordial black holes. It has not been confirmed yet, but it was an interesting detection. Likewise, the detection of various galaxies by the James Webb, especially the ones that seem to be a little bit too large, 
could be explained through the existence of primordial black holes again. And at least one galaxy, UHZ-1, with a video in the description discussing this more, would be best explained if the black hole in the middle was a result of an overmassive collapse sometime in the early universe. Or essentially, an ultra-massive primordial black hole. And so they do come in different sizes and different masses. Although according to some of the recent studies, most of them would be much smaller. Potentially around one solar mass or even less. And would actually be created in the first microsecond after the Big Bang. But that's in theory. In practice, several different searches so far discovered, well, nothing. For example, one of the studies in the description used excess infrared light that's supposed to be visible as a result of these black holes to try to see if they're out there. And they don't seem to be out there at all. At least not in infrared frequencies. Likewise, one of the other observations by using the Andromeda galaxy tried to see if one of these black holes passes in front of a star causing a microlensing effect. And though hundreds or even thousands were expected, only one was potentially found and it could also be some kind of a rogue planet and not a black hole at all. And so, so far, visual evidence seems to be kind of lacking. But they could still exist in just much smaller sizes and much smaller masses where they could be practically undetectable. Naturally though, that would be very difficult to prove. Either way, a kind of an exciting and somewhat interesting proposition and something that we'll definitely come back and talk more about once someone conducts a follow-up specifically focusing on those ultra-faint dwarf galaxies and the types of stars inside of them. But I guess until those future studies, or until we find something else about these black holes inside stars, that's all I wanted to mention. Check out some other videos in the description below on this topic, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.